Hello, this is David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then you are in the right place. There are thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have found problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to click below on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and you will be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, I have one video that turns out that I actually found out because I tried to figure out why this video was getting way more views than everyone else. Uh, all my other videos, I've got a couple that are in the thousands and they go down from there. Been, been around almost a year and this one has 5,000 climbing to 6,000 and continues to grow well. There's a link to it on Reddit and uh, I don't think they're very kind to me because they want to say, hey, we need to nip this guy in the bud. And so they send a lot of people my way. But uh, the thumbs up are winning like 70 to 60 or something like that. It's really close and I expected that because, you know, people are going to, there's a lot of intellectuals out there that go to Reddit and they think they guys are smart. And remember what I say what about intellectuals? They're not critical thinkers. They're interested in pretending to be smarter than you or any else, anybody else around them. And they get very uh, gang-like and they when they gang up and they're all real certain when they have lots and all the universities backing them up, but you get them in a corner and you give them the real uh, data, they become cowards. But anyways, that's a different story. But um, this gives lots, of course, uh, more comments than any other video I have as well. And once in a while, I get a question that's very interesting, even though sometimes it's quite aggressive. Zappo Kill, which of course is a very beautiful name that you would na name a pet rabbit or something. Of course, now I'm being sarcastic. In Newtonian world, they would overcome C. They would do that at CERN and Fermilab, but they don't. Stop talking baloney, please. Okay, what are they talking about? The speed of C. Because I say to everyone that we can describe the entire universe in Newtonian physics and that the relativity and all this stuff is not needed. And they go, they go well, wait a minute. If you're going to use Newton and particle accelerators, then all these particles particles will just go right past the, the speed of C because as it keeps accelerating, 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 then they will simply past C. So we're going to take a look at that today. And why is it mainstream says Newton goes beyond C? Well, if you accelerate under Newtonian laws, you should continue to go faster and faster until you pass the speed of light. That's what they say. Under Newton, particle accelerators work the same. And under Newton, rockets work the same. So rockets should, you just put a bigger, big, lots of uh, propellant on it and It'll eventually just go past me, pass it, just like the speed of sound. Remember when we thought we couldn't go faster. And of course they don't because we keep making bigger and bigger ones. We can never get a pass C. So what is their argument for this? Well, let's take a look at it and why this is wrong, number one. So uh, this is a, a list of, this is the first list of why they're wrong. So you want to stick around because I'm going to tell you why in our models it happens and it is limited to C, believe it or not. That'll make you stay around. Mainstream science is putting the cart before the horse. And it is. It's like a circular argument here. It took me a while to figure this out. Because of relativity, they say there is a limiting factor. That is, the current theory says there's a limiting factor. And a limiting factor is going to be like, okay, it's a limiting factor. So that's a law. Came down on high on tablets. Again, I talk about that all the time. I don't know. Maybe there's a place in the universe you, get, you go and it's like a Stonehenge and you find all the laws someone wrote down who designed it. I don't know. Uh, because of relativity, they said there was limiting factor. Okay, going backwards in logic, then they say Newton doesn't have the Einsteinian light speed res restriction and therefore is wrong. Now that is not good logic. Uh, the mainstream is not known for good logic because they say there's a standard model. It's not a model at all. There's no physicality, anything, and they are vague with it all the time, and that's a problem. But that's another story. But very common it happens that new theories can be that can be falsified by older theories or older work are said to be old and not relevant. I'll give an example of that. Neutrinos. When you talk about, you see Karazani's work and he, sa he shows very clearly that the neutrino exists. Why? Because we wanted to save special relativity uh, when it came to radioactivity and decay. And because of that, there should be more energy, blah, blah, blah. They invented the neutrino to take it away, blah, blah, blah. And of course, later they found it. And then when they were confronted like with Karazani's work, 
or they're confronted with the idea that maybe it doesn't exist. They said, no, it has to exist because without it, we these equations wouldn't balance. Well, the equations have it all already baked in. And then when they when you put Karazani's on top of that, what do they say? Well, they say that's old and it's irrelevant. I'm literally I've got emails that say that when we when I argue with people about the neutrino that it doesn't exist, why it was proposed to save special relativity, and they go, well, that's we didn't know a lot of it back then. Now we know more and we are wiser and they just basically they would kick these people in the gut like you know Pauli Pauli uh sort of a big physicist in history you know the young kids kick him aside for a incredibly witchcraft like magical world of neutrinos and neutrino oscillations uh but also um this is very uh absolutely in line with Dr Andreas Sees who subscribes and believes Weber, uh, Wilhelm Weber, uh, and his electrodynamic models of, of his charges, his, his particles, uh, and particle charges. I won't go see, go see his um, the my video on that. And right after this, I'll put a second video, on, and that's uh, his two videos. Well, he's in that same boat. He's saying, look, um, this new stuff has lots of problems. It's very vague. It's got lots of paradoxes. Um, that was in my last video about Andre Assis. And therefore, we're going to go backwards. And what are they going to say to him? That's old stuff. It's water under the bridge. It's no longer needed. It's no longer, we didn't understand what we were doing at then. They don't even look at it. Surprise. So what is wrong? Number two, we're going to look at even more basic problems, and that is mainstream science has no physical model for like magnetic or electric fields or gravity or light. or there, And therefore, and a, a lot of the way the atomic structure really works physically, and therefore force is vague. It's very true. That's why Andreas Cease talks about it and gives, you, gives us pointers to exactly where they are vague and how they are paradoxical, meaning they will talk about equivalent things, energies or movement, whatever it is, but they have different units and they can't be equivalent. And so why is that? Because they don't have a physical model. If they did, they could answer the question. Mainstream doesn't even think about as well what, and the second point is Karazani. He talks about particle propellant. Well, what is particle propellant? That is to get this thing to move on its own without any external force. It's got to use some of its own propellant. That is, okay, that's, this is the Earth um, modeled by uh, James Maxwell. And if this Earth wanted to move, we'd put a big rocket ship and we would use mass from the Earth to make propellant, which would shoot out <coughs> and would move it. And why? does it move because of that particle propellant. And that's what Karazani says, and that's what his autodynamic equations, why they're better than special relativity's equation, because they said for something to move, mass doesn't get bigger, it gets smaller because you gotta use mass to move itself. It's like a rocket at the fundamental level. So mainstream doesn't think this way. They don't think about particle propellant to move things. They just think, oh, there's a force. They draw a little arrow, you know, with a force like this. This is supposed to be an arrow here, like that. And it's going like this. And it just goes on forever. So if we turn a rocket on, it's going to go on forever. If we turn up, we get a particle accelerator going, it's going to keep accelerating forever until it goes right past the speed of light. And that's the problem. Why is that a problem? Because they don't have a model. If they had a model, it would tell them the answers. And yes, this is what critical thinkers say. Dr. Karazani was asked about this about 20 years ago. I remember this at a conference in a talk he gave up in Sacramento, I think, uh, University of California, Sacramento. And someone says, hey, um, well, no, wait a minute. It can't be Newtonian because you would go past the speed of light. And he said, no, there is an answer and the reason why. And that's because the propellant, the thing, the, the particles that push something when it is a par um, particle accelerator is that in the end, the particle that is accelerating the other particle is moving at the speed of light. And you can't go faster than the speed of light with a particle, uh, something moving only at the speed of light. It's a limit. There you go. Newton explains it. Uh, the Hilster's model. My father and I have real models of phys for physicality, for magnetic and electric fields, gravity and light and atomic structure, the whole thing, and can tell you exactly why particle accelerators cannot accelerate anything faster than, than C. Because the magnetic fields that we create 
in particle accelerators are G1 particles. They're the same as electrons in our and ours. No, they're smaller, but they're the same idea. They're the same as gravity, same as light. All that is the same, but it's going around at the basic speed of C, the average speed of C, and therefore it's never going to accelerate past it. You can't do it. The little guy's pushing this way to get that particle going, or if the particle is close to the speed of sight, I'm not going to impart any more force on it. I'd have to be going faster than the speed of C to get it going any faster than the speed of C. That simple. So the de particle model also says that propellant rockets will not go beyond C. <gasps> My goodness, curiously, we say relativity is wrong, but this is aspect seems of relativity seems to be right. What's going on? Well, what goes on is we have a model, right or wrong. We have a model. And the model tells us why. So we're not vague. Right or wrong, we're not vague. So that is the way this entire thing goes when it comes. And the answer we have for why Newton can easily explain particle accelerators because we give physicality to electric, electric and magnetic fields we know the speeds of those particles. We know that you can only accelerate something at the speed of which the accelerator is going to impart the force. If that's going at C, you're not going to go past C so that when a rocket is taking off and it's expelling material, it's because it's tearing apart uh, chemically bonds of molecules and atomic structure, those the speed of the G1 particles that make up the orbitals of atoms, they're coming out at what speed? C. Oh, someone asked you, what, if you want to know the answer to that, yes, if you're asking the question, well, make, what makes them go all at C in the average? It's the G2 particles below that that are going at C squared. They go on the average of C squared, and so on, and so on. But regardless, it's a model. It tells us why. It's not vague. And that is why, my friends, Newton can, in fact, explain the limit C both in a rocket ship and in a particle accelerator. And the last little tidbit I will give you, can we go faster? Well, the G2 particle that keeps that bends G1 particles, that is really the strong nuclear force and the thing that bends light, it's not gravity one, it's gravity two, and gravity two is traveling at C squared. In fact, if we were to make waves in gravity two, we could, tr we could transmit to Mars in less than a fourth of a second. That's pretty fast. And if we, use, if we have particles moving at C squared, technically, would somebody be able to use our model to, to propel something in the G1 world in our unicosm, faster than the speed of light? Don't know. That's for the technicians of the future to find, to find out. Maybe they'll use my father and I's model to do something. Who knows? So I hope that's answered your, your, the question that I was asked. Go take a look at those things, those the, that video, and you'll see me. And I really thank everybody for their comments and their support. Uh, we're past 500. We're going forward, continuing to grow. I really appreciate it. I've got more videos coming. I got the interview lining up with Stephen Hurl. Uh, he says that works fine. Hurl's this pronunciation. We did a test run on Google uh, Hangouts because that seems to be the best way to do interviews because they got a good connection. And we will have that coming up. And you don't want to miss that because that's a book you've got to read. If you don't know what that's you know about, go up here. I'll put that link right there. And remember what I say. Don't take what anyone says on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I am Dave D. Hilster, your science therapist. Ciao for now.